Today on the Bandana Grandma channel, learn how to turn a pile of old sweaters into a pile of beautiful mittens. Hi, Bandana Grandma here. See my mess? That's my sewing mess. I'm a messy sewer, just like I'm a messy cook. But I've got a new project going, and what I'm doing is I'm taking old wool sweaters, at least 60% wool, and I'm washing them and drying them to shrink them up or felt them, so when I cut them, they won't ravel. And I'm recycling them into beautiful mittens look at these aren't they cute it's so much fun because you can mix and match patterns and solids and design your own mittens they make great gifts they sell well at craft fairs they're 100 percent fleece lined you won't find a warmer mitten and they're really comfortable so if you're interested in these and want to see how I do it, stay tuned. There are three pieces to this mittens pattern plus a cuff. To make the cuff of the mitten, of course the easiest thing to do would be to cut the cuffs off the sleeves of the sweaters. But a sweater only has two sleeves. And one sweater, the body of one sweater, can make many more mittens than one pair. So what do you do when you run out of the cuffs? Well, then the next best thing to do, of course, is to turn to the bottom of the sweater where you'll find more ribbing and you can cut off lengths of that. I, I usually just take a, a cuff, measure it out the same distance and cut it with a seam allowance and then use and seam it together and use that for my cuff. So most all sweaters will have some sort of ribbing or finished edge on the bottoms of the sweaters and you can use those to make the cuff as well. Now I'm going to let this section be a troubleshooting section to help ward off some problems you might have as you make your mittens. Now these uh, pattern pieces are marked with right mitten but for a left mitten, all you do is turn it upside down. I did have a separate set marked left, but it's just kind of silly. You can just turn it upside down. But there's some things you got to remember when laying out your pattern pieces. For instance, if you have fabric and you're folding it over like this, you're automatically going to cut a left and a right if you cut two pieces together because it's folded over. And when you open it, the left, when you open it and this side comes out, the left is going to be opposite the right. That'll be correct. But there's a difference. If you're just stacking your fabric and it doesn't have a seam and you're not opening it up, if you just have separate pieces of fabric and you put your pattern down, you cut it, you're going to get two of the same piece. If you're going to stack them, you need to cut one at a time. Cut this one and then turn it and cut the other one. And if you've stacked two layers, that'll give you two left and two right. You want to save as much fabric as possible when you're cutting out. So, for instance, I need to cut some more liners out. Now, if I cut it out right here in the middle, I'm, you know, I'm wasting a lot of fabric because I'm going to have a big hole in the middle of this uh, folded piece of fabric. So, I'm going to just fold enough over to put my pattern on and then that gives me all this without a big hole cut out of the middle. This is basic sewing but just in case you're a beginner I wanted to let you know these things. All right I've pinned my pattern pieces to my fleece lining and I have only folded it over just enough to fit the pattern pieces on. I've snugged this, I turned this one upside down because I wanted to snug it up in this hole here to make more room to leave more room back here if I wanted another piece back here. So that's a good thing to do. And you might get concerned because you'll say, 
well this side's up and it says right and this side's down so it's it's gonna be wrong but remember if it's folded over you're automatically going to get a right and a left and a left and a right so then i just need to take the two that go together switch them out and i'll have what i need so we can get cutting sometimes it's easier for maneuvering and handling things if you just do some gross cuts first to cut the pieces pattern pieces apart and then you can do some more fine-tuned cutting after they're apart so I remove this one first not rocket science there's no you know place on fold or anything like that with these I just cut out singularly all the way around okay here's our pieces cut out I'm going to remove the pins now one way to identify the correct pieces once the pattern labeled pattern is off of it the finger edge is round and the wrist edge down here is flat see that almost looks like a mitten now you see that and when you sew it this makes this makes a thumb all right our pieces are cut out we have the palm tops here and the palm bottoms here so one palm top and one palm bottom have to go together and you want right sides up so i'm going to take one set and push them aside for now and take the other set and we're going to put right sides together and when you put right sides together the thumb should be together and this is the fuzzy side or the unfinished side that's facing up so what you're going to do is you're going to pin them as closely as possible on the edges to mat matching up the edges as closely as you can put that in there like that now I regret not putting a notch on these and if I make my own pattern I'm going to do that because the stitch line is not indicated Here's our palm, the top and bottom of the palm folded over on each other with the thumb. And I'm over here on the corner, that sharp corner I told you about, and I'm going to stitch up about a quarter of an inch, backing up to lock it in. Then I'm turning it so I can ride the side of my, my presser foot against the outside edge all the way around, lining up the edges as close as I can as I go. I'm using black thread for contrast so you can see and it won't really matter inside the mitten anyway it's just the lining see I'm riding that side of the foot right on the edge of the fabric the cut edge of the fabric removing my pins as I approach them and adjusting the sides the edges as necessary to keep them lined up oops there we go now sometimes when you get on curves you need to lift your presser foot and pivot but you got to make sure your needles down in the fabric so it stays put and it also avoids puckering that way too I'm having to gauge how deep to make this thumb so I'm measuring with my own thumb to figure out where to stop when I make my own pattern to include with this video I'm going to put notches on it to show exactly where to start and stop the stitching and when you do stop the stitching on the thumb side, you want to run it right off the edge so there's no uh, seam alliance allowance there. You run it right off the edge and that makes putting the mitten together a lot easier. Approaching the thumb seam area, we want to be careful not to catch the thumb and to make sure we get all the edges in there. We're backing it up a bit just to lock in the stitch. Okay. 
right? Now this is what you have. Open it up, you have a mitten top with the thumb. The palm top and the palm bottom and the thumb sewed together. And this will be sewn to this back piece to make the entire inside lining mitten. So you're making an entire mitten minus the cuff to go inside your good mitten. So now I'm going to pin the back side onto this and we're putting right sides together again and I'm going to stitch this around pinning it to match as closely as possible. I have pinned the palm top and bottom with the thumb assembly to the one piece back. This again is the liner to the mitten. It's a full mitten without the cuff that's going to go inside the pretty mitten. And we're going to just sew this all the way around from the bottom around the top to the other side. Now you have to be careful not to catch this thumb like over here in the you don't want to get it over where your seam is going to be. So you get this thumb out of the way. And it's a little tricky right here where the thumb joins because it wants to separate there. But you just kind of finesse it in and stitch it right up over there. The thumb wants to go up. So when you get on the other side and you have the seam, there's, there's not enough room to really split it and separate it. So I just stitch it up because, you know, the thumb is going to be up when you're wearing it. So I just come right down here, leave the... The seam in the up position and stitch it right down to the other side and here we go back it up unlock the stitch and then get over on the edge removing the pins as I approach them making sure these edges are the raw edges are even here's the tricky part we have to get your thumb out of the way but still catch all the close edges right there and then when I do this I back it up because that's a stress point okay now will help it not rip with use Here when I'm at this side, remember I'm going to take this seam where the thumb was sewn and I'm going to press it up. I'm going to push it upward and sew over it that way. Now if it, your foot tries to get under it, just lift your presser foot, tuck it under there. Sometimes you got to finesse it a little bit. And don't forget to go backwards again over it to get it tight. And off we go. Back it up a little. Go forward again. There is your mitten liner. Okay, there's your mitten liner. Now you're going to use it with the ugly side up like this because this is going to go inside the good mitten and you don't want these seams against your skin. So this part will be against your skin where the, it's finished. Now what I'm going to do is trim a little bit around here. I don't need quite that thick, especially in the thumb here. See that? And you know what else it might do? This thumb is pretty wide for me. This is where you can customize it. It's a pretty wide thumb. I think I'm going to go in and trim and uh, sew this a little closer with a little bigger seam allowance so I don't have this much room in my thumb. And now we get to make the pretty mitten. We're going to make this mitten, the other one. So I'm going to show you how to start that out. Now... The backing is this gray fabric. 
which is this. And you see I've got this little embellishment on there. So here's my little heart that I'm going to put on this one. And you want to center it. So I'm going to fold this in half. Let me put something behind here so you can see it better. There. I'll fold this in half so I can find the center. And I'm going to fold my little heart in half. So I can also get that right on the center. Now I know it's in the center. But I want it to be approximately the same distance down. I know I got a seam allowance up here, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it that if I have a seam allowance here, that should be about. A better way to make these hearts even would be to measure from the cuff end up to the point of the heart. So what I do now is zigzag this heart onto the top of the back of the mitten here. Now let me see if I can turn my light on without blinding you. I hope that's going to be all right. I think it'd be easier for me if I get it in here right there, straighten it up. Make sure I got it as straight as possible. Although, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm setting my stitch on a zigzag. And I'm going to start going around the top of the heart. I don't like that noise. Sometimes that usually means nothing good. My my uh, bobbin is messing up and making knots underneath so let me fix that see that's that's what it was doing the bobbin was messing up making knots so I got to cut these out this happens all the time in sewing it gets slowed down with all these little things I'm going to cut this out I'm going to check my bobbin make sure the threads coming out of it in the correct the correct way because sometimes it gets twisted around and then it messes up I'm doing a voiceover here after the fact, hoping to save you hours of time. I had such a problem getting this bobbin to behave. Every time I'd start to sew, it would be clunk, 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 and lots of knots. I tried everything. I tried rethreading the bobbin. I tried rewinding the bobbin. I rethreaded the whole machine. I changed the needle. I adjusted the tension nothing would work. Later on I did figure out what was happening and it was total operator error and when we get to that point I'll tell you how to avoid it. When I told my sister she had had the same problem and she said I mentioned that to you but for reasons you'll see later I didn't identify what I was doing with what she had told me. So it's a little tricky and it's a pain but you need to know this. All right, I've got the little heart embellishment centered on the back of the mitten. And we're going to give this another try with the zigzag. This is actually the fifth try with the zigzag. All right, so you just zigzag in the very edge of the embellishment for the applique. So it catches all the loose threads and it won't ravel, but it has been felted in the washer and dryer, so it shouldn't. But it will attach it, give a nice border on it, and it doesn't matter if the two hearts aren't exactly the same because this is country crafts after all, and a little primitive is great. All right, back it up on the end. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing for the main mitten part as we did for the liner. We have the palm top and we have the palm bottom and they are going to go together, right sides together, just like we did for the liner. We're going to pin them together and again we're going to sew a quarter inch, quarter inch here up around the top, down, about three quarters of an inch lower than you began. 
Now this time, just because of the direction the thumb is going in and how comfortable I am with how it sits in my machine, I'm going to, instead of starting on the, on the pointy sharp edge side, I'm going to start on the long side, the thumb side, and I'm going to just judge quarter inch here, three quarter inch more here, where my thumb would fit in. So I'm going to start it right here. When I put the pattern up, I'm going to try and put notches at the correct place so that you won't have to guess. Well, I think I missed it on camera, but I just sewed from here all the way around over to here. Turn it inside out. Make that turn it right side out. And we have that part of the mitten. Now we're going to take the back side of the mitten and lay it right sides together over the palm side of the mitten. And then we're going to stitch it all the way up and around making sure that we reinforce the seams here and that we keep the thumb out of the way. up on the palm joint. Well unfortunately my camera decided to act up while I was sewing that seam all the way around but I went all the way around made sure I kept the thumb out of the way <clears throat> and now we'll turn it inside out. Make that right side out. And we have the outside of the right mitten. So now I need to put the liner inside. So the liner is inside with the seams sticking out. So this, these are seam sides together here because you want it nice and smooth inside where your hand goes. Alrighty, now for the cuff. And the sewing the cuff in is going to put all three parts together. The outer mitten, the inner liner, and the cuff are all going to be sewn together here. So I'm lining this up, putting the seams together. This seam and this seam and this seam and this seam. Like that. Now here's where I've made many a mistake where I had to tear the whole thing out. This gets interesting. Now this is the wrist end of the cuff. And it's going to go in first. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but this is how it works. And you want... Yep. You want it to be right side out when you put it inside, cuff side, and the part that's going to go up here, going in first. And to make sure you did it right, when you look inside, you should see the unfinished edges in there. Because you're going to sew all around here. To, to combine all three pieces and then you're going to pull this out you say uh oh it's inside out yes but you're going to fold it over and that's when it's right side out again so it is kind of confusing upside down backwards and inside out but that's how it's done 
So, wrist end goes in first, and you line up your seams. If it only has one seam, you're probably going to want that on the inside, the thumb side. So, I'm putting it in with the one seam on the thumb side, and it's right side up. All right, now I'm going to need to pin this all together because there's lots of seams and edges and they're going to try and move around on you. So we're going to pin this all together, matching the ends as closely as we can. And this is a lot for your needle to go through. Now, when I can, I open the seams like that spread them out and put them together. I've got it pinned all the way around and I changed the direction of the pin so the the um, button end of the pin is sticking out so it'll be easier to pull as I go around. So here we go. Ugh. Yeah, drop your presser foot. Another tip. All that trouble I was having with the bobbin knotting up, it was operator error. The problem is when you're sewing through something thick like this, it isn't just a matter of putting it in and dropping your presser foot. What you're doing is you have to raise the presser foot extra to get that all under there. And then when you let it go, you feel like you dropped it, but you didn't. You still have to lock it down like that. And I wasn't doing that, and that's what was causing my bobbin to knot up all underneath. Operator error. So remember that if you're lifting extra to raise your pressure foot and you let it go and it goes down, it's not down all the way. You have to still push it. That's what I was doing wrong. I did it again. <laughs> One more time. Raise the presser foot to get your fat material under there. Let it go. You're not done. Push it down. All right, here we go. Pull the pins. This is a little difficult because there's so much fabric here. All right, I stitched all around the edge and then I went back and I zigzagged above it all the way around just to hold those edges nice and firm. And now we're going to take the cuff from the in, pull the cuff out and fold it back on itself. And you see, you got the right side of the cuff out. Well, wouldn't you know it, the camera turned off again. But I thought I'd come back and show you the, how I look now that I'm all finished. I have my pretty cuff on, and my embellishment, and my two-tone palm. I look so cute. So if you like this tutorial, please hit the <laughs> Hey, wake up. <laughs> okay, well the next time you're in thrift stores, look around for some cheap, cheap sweaters that you can cut up and make mittens. I'm looking around for those kitchen fairies. They got nothing on me. <laughs> okay, hope you like this. Be sure to subscribe. If you want to contact Bandana Grandma, there's contact information below. See you next time.
thanks so much for coming by and visiting at the Bandana Grandma Kitchen. And if you really like my videos, please remember to hit that thumbs up down below, the like button. That really helps my channel. And it also helps if you want to share my video with your friends, maybe on Facebook or Google Plus, to let them know that you enjoy watching Bandana Grandma. If you'd like to contact me, there's contact information and special links down below in the share more section. So come back again real soon. If you don't find me in my kitchen, come on out back to the garden. I'll probably be there.